is happening to all the cars? Have you tried to buy a new car lately? Almost everything is delayed. I went to the Tesla facility in Brent Cross recently to collect a Model 3 that we'd bought to give away to the first winner in our EV giveaway. Congratulations to Lindsay on her new car. And I noticed there were only Model 3s. Try and buy a Tesla Model S or Model X and deliveries are being scheduled for the end of 2022, a year and a half away. So what's going on? Well, it turns out that loads of manufacturers have had to reduce or stop their production lines, so it's now very difficult to get hold of some new cars. And a lot of it is down to a shortage of microchips used in modern vehicles. I should point out that it's not just Tesla with delayed cars. VW said it was in crisis mode recently. They were 100,000 cars short. Ford said it would make over a million fewer cars this year. And Stellantis, that's cheap, Chrysler, Dodge, Ram, Fiat, Abarth, Alfa Romeo, Maserati, Citroen, Peugeot, Vauxhall, DS, the supergroup, they're all feeling the effects of this. Apparently, they've even been going so far as to remove the digital speedos on the Peugeot 308 and go back to old school analog ones, madness. So what's going on? Well, two issues can be traced back to coronavirus. Firstly, the shutdown has meant that chip makers had to slow down production massively. Secondly, because of coronavirus, everyone else had to shut down as well. We've all been stuck inside, so sales of electronic gizmos like PlayStations, Xboxes, phones, laptops, and tablets, they've all gone through the roof. People are relying on these gadgets more than ever to do their work or to, I don't know, stay sane. So now there's a shortage of chips, and what chips there are have been going into consumer electronics. At the same time, we've been relying on our cars less than ever, and that's ultimately resulted in the chip makers giving priority to your Mac instead of your McLaren. As if coronavirus wasn't bad enough, Mother Nature decided to stick her oar in as well. Remember that massive winter storm in Texas? Well, that affected a whole bunch of electronics facilities owned by Samsung, NXP, and Infineon, which had to shut down. And then in Taiwan last year, there was a severe drought and of course, the semiconductor industry is heavily reliant on using a lot of water, so that affected things too. And then in Tokyo, the Renesas factory, which is responsible for nearly a third of the global market share for microcontroller chips used in cars, they had a massive fire. So freak weather, freak fire, freak virus, and all of that means that now we can't get our chips in our cars. If you're asking yourself, are cars really that reliant on chips? The answer is more than you know. Every single new car uses a ton of microcontroller units, MCUs, that control various aspects of the vehicle. The chassis, the safety systems, the ABS brakes, the stability control systems, airbags, automated parking, self-driving. According to one analyst, an Audi Q7 uses 38 separate MCUs from seven different suppliers, including five in the infotainment system alone and five in the chassis control system. If just one of these chips, just one, is in short supply because of a fire or a drought or a virus, then that's it. You don't have an Audi Q7 anymore. Now, you would think that the car industry, being as big as it is, would be able to say, hey, come on, guys, look, forget the PlayStation 5. Give us our chips. We're loyal customers. But you could argue that the chip companies aren't as interested in making chips for cars as they are in making chips for phones or TVs. One of the reasons for this is that cars use a specific type of chip, legacy chips, which are tough, long lasting, and usually of an older design. Chips like this might have been developed maybe 10 years ago, and they've proven themselves to be reliable, and car makers love them, they still use them, but the chip makers won't make as big a profit from these old chips. The big money, the real profit margins, comes from making new chips for iPhones and PS5s. So suddenly, car makers are at the back of the queue. So what does that mean for me and you, and how are we gonna fix the situation? Well, in the short term, we're just gonna have to suck it up and wait. <laughs> We're literally gonna have to wait longer for our cars. And not only that, but some car makers are gonna have to focus on the models that are most strategically important or profitable to them. Flashback to what I said earlier about Tesla. They make the Model S, the Model X, the Model Y, and they plan to make the Roadster and a couple of other vehicles. But right now in the UK, the only car they sell is the Model 3. They are working on solutions, of course. Some car makers are bringing their chip manufacturing in-house. So rather than relying on the guys and girls who just want to make chips for laptops and TVs and whatnot, they can do it all themselves, in theory. 
but it's not that easy. It's not their area of expertise and it's not something they can just switch on overnight, but they have got help. Intel are spending $20 billion on new chip factories that could help with the shortage. And chip makers in Taiwan are also increasing production. So in the short to medium term, we have a problem, but things should start to iron themselves out over time. Plus, there's always used cars, right? I'm about to jump on Auto Trader UK right now and start daydreaming about a replacement for this beast behind me. Maybe, uh, I don't know, AMG GT, Porsche 911, maybe something electric. You never know, watch this space. As always, guys, hope you enjoyed the video, hope you learned something new, and as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and I'll see you soon for the next one.